So for the introduction today, I was trying to think of an original way to say something along the lines of, uh, well done for working so hard, keep working really hard, I hope you can see how this is all connected. I couldn't think of an original way of saying that, so I wanted to say this instead. Over the last few weeks, I've seen so many wonderful things of how people are kind of looking out for each other and looking after each other in this time. Um, my brother and his wife work in the NHS, um, and you know, hearing about the, the lengths that they've gone to has just been humbling. Um, and it's been wonderful being kind of part of this many community as well, seeing that everything that you've done. Maybe go find someone that's done something amazing and, and thank them after this video. And for now, it is Finding Factors Part Two. I know how important it is to look at multiplication and all its different forms and how challenging it can become as well. And Emily, I think you've done a brilliant job here. Have a look at this. Do you remember that question about the egg cups filling the bottle and the glasses and the jugs and so on? I loved Emily's drawing here. You see, we've got one, two, three, four. So see if I can remember this right. So we've got then the egg cups, uh, six of the egg cups go in to fill a glass and then three glasses fill a bottle and two bottles fill a jug. Um, so 18 egg cups fill a bottle going from step one to step three. That's a wonderful way of showing that, isn't it? Times six times three. I think that's fantastic. Six glasses fill a jug. We're going from step two to step four. So we're going from here, three fill this bottle, two fill a jug. So it's times three times two. 36 egg cups fill a jug. We're going from step one to step four. Well, that is a fantastic way of showing that. And thank you, Emily. We'll all learn something from that. Also, again, a fantastic example that I got sent through of one of the combinations uh, questions and asked you to think and try and design your own questions for this. Um, now, I've had some wonderful examples coming as well, and I'll build them in hopefully on Fridays, but another one here. Um, so we've got witches having cloaks and pairs of stripy socks. How many outfits in total? Three cloaks, 13 pairs of stri stripy socks, 39 in total. And then Bella. Five tops and 12 pairs of shorts for a 60 outfits combination. So again, loving those examples that are coming through. Today, of course, is the second part of where we're looking at factors. Um, so here's a area model for nine times four is 36. So nine squares here and four squares there. So nine times four, 36 squares in total. Um, so we can tell that, well, one factor of 36 must be nine because nines go evenly into 36, four nines, 36. So nine is one factor. And of course, four is another one because four, if I keep adding up in fours, eventually I get to 36. So four is a factor. But there's some other factors we can work out from this number sentence. So two must also be a factor of 36 because if I count up in twos, I will get to four. And if I count up in fours, I'll get to 36. The two will definitely fit because it's a factor of four. So it will also have to be a factor of 36. Now, just the same, three is a factor of 36. If you look, the threes fit evenly into a nine. So if the threes fit evenly into a nine and each nine, then of course they will also fit into 36. So from this one number sentence, I can work out all those different factors of 36. 9, 4, 2 and 3 are all factors of 36. Now, it's your turn. Have a think. 15 multiplied by 4 equals 60. So from that number sentence, see if you can work out different factors of 60. How many can you tell from that number sentence? Pause the video. Have a go. Well, I, I wonder what you spotted. Let's have a look at some possibilities. So, well, some factors of 60, of course, 15 is a factor of 60 because four lots of 15 um, make 60. And of course, four is as well. If I add up in fours, then there will not be a remainder. Um, but then also, of course, two must be because two is a factor of four. It must also be a factor of 60. And also five, because if I count up in fives, I'll get to 15. So five must evenly go into 60 as well. And actually, so must three. But look at that. There's five lots of three, two, three, four, five lots of three in 15. So in this line, there's five threes. In this line, there's five threes. And that one as well. And then that one as well. So three must be a factor of 60 as well. So we're going to really extend this thinking today. And it is finding factors part two. Brilliant for developing that understanding again, multiplication and division and using this. So I hope, uh, I hope you really do well today. I hope it really makes you think. 
Um, so just a bit of a recap again. Four times three is twelve, and that this is this area model. So twelve divided by four equals three, and twelve divided by three equals four. So four and three go evenly into twelve. They are factors of twelve. Equally, we mentioned about finding factors of 20. I might just use number facts, or I might think, oh, well, fours go into 20? How many lots of four are in 20? Is it a whole number? Yes, it is. Um, and again, that's where we looked yesterday. Um, and then we had a look at these examples here. And we thought about, well, all the, of these single digit numbers, which ones are factors of 32 and which ones aren't? And we looked at all the different strategies for knowing and we'll maybe multiply up. Is, is nine a factor of 32 and well nine lots of three is 27 and that leaves a remainder then like five more to get to 32 and that's that's not a nine um, and again we use all these strategies to work out those factors now have a look at this question and I want you to think which can we work out with no calculation so single digit factors of 90 just have a quick look um, I am going to say pause the video but not for long which ones can you just tell immediately if they are or aren't factors of 90 Okay, and let's have a look at some of the examples there that, that I went for. Well, immediately I knew that one, two, five, and nine must be. One, of course, if we count up in ones, I'll get to 90. And also if we count up in twos, because 90 is an even number. I know that five must be a factor of 90 because every number that ends in a zero um, has five as one of its factors. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Every 10 has a five as one of its factors. And again, I know nine is because 10 lots of nine is 90. Now, actually, fairly well straight away, I also knew that 8 wasn't, because 10 lots of 8 is 80, and then another 8, 88, and so, actually, it won't go evenly into, into 90. Um, now, finding factors. So, of the, um, the single-digit numbers that we have left, 3, 4, 6, and 7, now, see if you can work out which ones of those will and won't be factors of 90. Pause the video and have a go. Okay, and let's, let's have a look at how we could break up 90 to help us here. Um, so if I split my 90 into 30 and 30 and 30, I know that that's 10 lots of 3, that's 10 lots of 3, that's 10 lots of 3. Um, and so in total there is 90. So yeah, 3 must be a factor. It goes into evenly into all of those three parts. And 4? Well, if I split 90 into 40 and 40 and 10, that's, that's 10 lots of 4, another 10 lots of 4. But then 4 doesn't go into 10 for a 12. So, so well, no, 4 is, mustn't be a factor of 90. Um, and 6, of course, I could split 90 into 60 and 30. And 10 lots of 6 is 60. And 5 lots of 6 is 30. So 6 is a factor of 90. And 7, well, if I split 90 into 70, that's 10 lots of 7. And then 20, well, 7 doesn't go evenly into 20. So it won't be one of those factors. Now, factors of 120, which can we work out mentally here? Well, this could help with this. Now, again, this is just a way of showing that every even number, if we have a look at every even number here, can you see that um, when we go up in, uh, in multiples of 10, in 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on, that every even number um, will be in this, uh, in this sequence. So two will be a factor of 120 if this continues. And similarly, we can see that 5 must be one of the factors of 120. 5, 10, 15, 20. When we go up in 5s, we always have these numbers ending in a 0 in this sequence. Um, but if we have a look at 4, this is a slightly different pattern. Because can you notice, 4 could be a factor of 120 from here. Because look, 4 and 8 and always even numbers. Um, so if it was an odd number, it, couldn't be a, a, it wouldn't have 4 as a factor here. But there are some even numbers where 4 isn't one of the factors as well. Um, and so that can kind of help to, um, to show that, well, 2 must be a factor of 120. 5 and 10 must be. Maybe 4 is. And we'll come to that. Um, so let's see if we can use our multiplication facts here. Now, 3 times 4 is 12. So here I have 4. I've got 3 lots of 4. There's one lot of 4. There's another four, lot of 4, and there's another lot of 4. So 3 lots of 4 equals 12. Um, but also, 3 lots of 40 will be 120. And just like 30 lots of 4 will be 120, can you see here? That's a 40, that's another 40, and that's another 40. So in total, I've got 3 lots of 40 is 120. 
So I can also use the multiplication facts that I know um, for single digit numbers and I can use them to help me to find factors of larger numbers as well. And so to today's tasks. Uh, if you click on the blue link at the bottom of this video, you'll find task A and task B. So for task A, first of all, have a look at the numbers here and which of those numbers are factors of 36 if you're doing task A and then the second question is similar. Questions three and question four, um, so they require an explanation and you have to say whether it is always true, sometimes true or never true when you read the statement and, and how do you know, okay? So really looking forward to seeing how you do with that. You might have a go at task A or task B. I'll see you again tomorrow.